What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brian, here with Triggered Wrestling. We're talking about whose story really needs to be finished at WrestleMania. Is it Cody Rhodes? Is it The Rock? And apparently, Roman Reigns has his own story that nobody's asking about. Stay tuned for all that this episode of Triggered Wrestling. Triggered Wrestling is so awesome. All the way around. That gets me triggered. Ooh, okay. Well, let's go with the bad trigger right now. See, I'm a, I'm a fan of all of it. We'll force you to watch Triggered Wrestling. A lot of stories, bruv. Even Drew McIntyre has a story, apparently. Uh, CM Punk had a story that had to be put on hold because he's fragile as fuck. <laughs> what story are you talking about when it comes to the tribal chief, bruv? Oh, it was just Xavier Woods was talking to Shayna Baszler on Up, Up, Down, Down. And they're talking about the WrestleMania stories. And then uh, they're like, Cody Rhodes is going to finish his stories. Like, but what about Roman Reigns' story? No one asks him about his story. He, he's got a story <laughs> going on. He's chasing down <laughs> history to be the longest reigning champion in WWE history. Ooh. But nobody cares. Nobody cares. Who is cooking? Who was asking? Xavier Woods? Yeah, that was Xavier Ooh. Woods and Shayna Baszler. Said nobody's asking about the tribal chief. They're only focused on Cody Rhodes and The Rock. But how funny would it be if they did like the whole finger, finger, what is it? The finger point of doom? The finger flick of doom? What is it? A finger point of death? Yeah. When it's just like, ah, you're my cousin, bro. I was just fucking with you. (laughs) Oh, shit. If The Rock inserting himself into WrestleMania did not piss people enough, I think that went well. Yeah, but so what what do you you think? Because obviously we saw SmackDown. Cody Rhodes said he's going to finish the story, just not at WrestleMania. The Rock comes out. Pretty much it's going to be The Rock versus... Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. There's pushback from the fans. Cody Rhodes telling everybody to wait. He knows what he's doing. Trust him. Like, what is going on? The seeds have been planted for a long time. People just don't listen. Nobody said the story has to end at WrestleMania. Nobody said that. So, like I said earlier in our post on Facebook and our social media at Triggered Wrestling, uh, follow us there. Cody Rhodes can easily get his match at SummerSlam and finish the story there. You know, um, The Rock can have WrestleMania. Cody Rhodes can get SummerSlam. Both men are happy with the paycheck. Both men win or lose or whatever. But like I said about the siege, CM Punk told him that just when you're there, you're about to get the belts. You're about to finish your story. Someone more famous than him comes in and takes that away. A lot of people were saying, oh, he's referencing himself. Weeks later, people have said that he was talking about The Rock. Seth Rollins last week when he was pleading his case. Do you want my title, the Dusty Rhodes title, the title everybody fights for, or the Hollywood title that everybody politics their way into? People are not Paying attention. The seeds were there. The rock came in, inserted himself into the to the story, I would say. But at the same time, at WWE Day 1, everybody and their mama wanted The Rock and Roman Reigns. Oh, we're finally gonna get The Rock and Roman Reigns. Three years in the making. The Rock went on to um, college game day and said, oh yeah, last year at WrestleMania, which was what, 38? 38. Yeah, last year's WrestleMania, we, we already had a plan. There Wait, was, 39. It was 39. Oh, 39. Oh, it was already right there on paper. We just didn't, you know, we didn't come up to an agreement. It should have been done last year and we're thinking about doing it this year. Bam. The Rock went on to um, ESPN's first stake with Ma and Stephen A. Smith. And he said, yeah, we're planning on doing a WrestleMania match. Myself with my cousin, Roman Reigns, and it's going to be the biggest match of all time. People are not paying attention, bruv. And in my opinion, I'm like, all right, cool. If y'all aren't paying attention, then whose fault is that? Because it ain't my fault. It ain't Cody Rhodes' fault. It ain't The Rock's fault. Yeah, you know, it's kind of weird because we already knew, like, The Rock had came back before Royal Rumble. So you know yep. he was going to be involved at some point in time. Fact. I just... I don't know. People get their hopes up. They forget things. Is that the fans' fault? I don't know. I mean, I forget some things. Sometimes shit I saw two weeks ago on Raw or AEW. It is what it is. I got no problem with The Rock going against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. It's going to be a good match. Let me rephrase that. It may not be the best match in terms of matchmaking, but storyline-wise, it's... Hollywood mega stars. It, it's it's the, it's Andre the Giant versus Hulk Hogan. Not going to be a yep. good match, but it's going to be memorable, right? 
Yep. Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins. Probably, I think I even mentioned that it was going to be Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins, and CM Punk at one point. That I, I thought that was going to happen. Yeah. I still think Cody Rhodes can finish his story. His story can finish any time. He doesn't really necessarily need to be without a title uh, before he goes against Roman Reigns again. You know, like I mentioned, uh, I preferably still think that Cody Rhodes should win the title only to lose it to Damian Priest because to me, he is a lot better chasing the title than he is with the title, probably. Um, like I remember at one point in time, Seth Rollins was chasing the title for a while. He finally got got it and then they say that that title reign sucked because there, I mean, there was nobody else for him to face cody rhodes is a lot better chasing the title at, just like seth rollins was at that point that's what his gimmick is i think at this point even if he's a champion for 10 minutes and then dame priest cashes in i would like to see that there's so many ways that this story could go i just feel like the fan base is jumping to conclusions and jumping to hating this a little bit too soon don't forget death threats bro death threats to the rock star yes yeah kicking her off twitter bro yeah man crybaby's out here crying because they didn't get what they want and another thing these fans are acting like this is the first time WWE screw them. These fans are acting like this is the first time WWE has done a shitty booking. These fans are acting like this is the first time WWE has done something horrible in their booking and they don't do anything about it. Like, bro, I've been watching WWE since what, 98? I can tell you so many fucking things how many, how many times they screwed the fans over. But this is not the first time and it's most likely, most likely not going to be the last. So, you know, me as a Cody fan and as a Rock fan, in my opinion, I I would rather see Cody because the match would be better. But it's The Rock, bro. The one person that defeated Stone Cold Steve Austin, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, John Cena at WrestleMania. And he could beat his own cousin, Roman Reigns, at WrestleMania. The first person to ever do it. Be four major stars, four faces of the company, bro. That's going to be fucking, that's the story I want. Do you know, I will say this. So I feel like WWE's booking is more like chess, right? They, they're they thinking so many things in the future. They already knew that The Rock was going to be there months ago, apparently, right? With, with the way you're talking about it. They're booking really far ahead in time. Something that AEW continues to not do. And I feel like they just literally book week to week. Or, uh, I mean, we all saw that episode of... AW All Access where Tony Khan's literally showing him a piece of paper that he's like, oh yeah, I've got you down for three months. You got, you can, you can face this guy here. You can face that guy here. And there's like no storylines in between. He's like, oh, we'll work something in. Like they don't really got a storyline going on, but WWE does good or bad. You can at least say they have some sort of storyline. Yeah, see, good or bad. I mean, a lot of people are saying, oh, with The Rock uh, politicking his way to the main event, it, it's bad. I was like, okay, and you act like this is the first time they were, has had a bad story. Like Goldberg. I remember that one. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of them. Goldberg coming back, Brock Lesnar coming back multiple times. I mean, there's a lot of questionable stuff. Yeah. Bray Wyatt getting not disqualified or counting out. Yeah, Br- what happened to that? Fuck, I, I was there and I don't remember what happened. Seth Rollins got, didn't get DQ'd. He just, the Bray Wyatt didn't answer the count, right? No, they disqualified, I think, see, I don't remember. They disqualified Rollins because I think he was going to use his sledgehammer on a beaten down fiend it was a sledgehammer with a bunch of chairs on top of the fiend yes and then the ref said no no mas i've seen enough he's dead stop being a dead horse <laughs> yeah man it's a lot of question about booking over there but i still want to see a rock roman we still have the uh press conference that's going to be on thursday which cody Rhodes still has not picked his opponent you know if they put the match pencil to paper Rock versus Roman Reigns. Cody Rhodes can still sign that that contract and get his match at WrestleMania versus uh, Roman Reigns. You know, nobody said it had to be a singles match, and that would help The Rock with his wrestling because we know how he got gassed when he attacked Jinder Mahal. You can make a triple threat match. There's many ways about it, and I don't know why fans are yeah. still anger about it and oh blah blah blah, blah this is trash. Oh. Yeah, they still got Elimination Chamber too, which I will not be watching live. It's way too early. Yeah, see, and the Elimination Chamber. People forget that the winner of the chamber gets a chance at the belt that the Royal Rumble winner did not choose. So whoever is the chamber winner is going to have to pick Seth Rollins. You know, no way he's going to pick uh, Roman Reigns. So people are forgetting about everything that can happen. I mean, come on. Cody and Rollins with the with the chamber winner? This is going to be one of the first times that we see a Royal Rumble winner and an Elimination Chamber winner chasing after the same title. That's the third place title, I should say. It's going to be a bad book in my opinion. I just think Cody Rhodes can sign the uh, contract on Thursday at the WrestleMania press conference in Las Vegas. Make it a triple threat. Boom. You can help The Rock with this wrestling. 
and there'll be less interferences from the bloodline, Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa. You know, I'm so excited for WrestleMania. We still got Jay Uso versus Jimmy Uso, probably. Yeet versus No Yeet. That would be a good match to see. Special guest referees, Solo Sokoa or Rikishi. That would be dope. Speaking of that bloodline family, Jacob Fatu, actually, uh, his contract expired with MLW, bro. A lot of people want him over there in WWE, the NXT brand. Yeah. I, Booker T is the main one. He said, well, and was that one, that was in a fuck it what was it his uh his thing R- realm of wrestling R- right that's what it is Rome? i think goes i think so yeah yeah he's pretty much said that he is going to be jacob fatu's manager right man not manager his he i forgot how he named it but he said he's gonna make sure that he reaches the top which to me means that he's probably gonna be going to nxt adrian you gave jacob fatu a fucking beer in the middle of a match bro hell that yeah bro that shit when he, do, he did a tope suicida landed right in front of us i hey, just opened my modelo at ringside he fell i was like you want a beer he was like hell yeah and he chucked that shit yeah bro that was dope, <laughs> that was dope. <laughs> i have the picture too blurry yeah, i took it blurry as fuck but it yeah. happened <laughs> NXT Vengeance Day had a banger of a match. Trick Williams versus Ilya Dragunov. It led to the 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 turn seen months away, seen years away. You could see that from miles away. But that match was really good. I thought Trick Williams was going to win for a little bit. If you haven't seen that Triggered Wrestling Army, go back and look at that match. It was good. And you don't need to have a bunch of Canadian destroyers to have a good match. You do not. You do not. So would you say, in your opinion, it would be like a five-star match since you're recommending it? Call that a five-star banger, bro. That's what's up. Yeah, and then uh, what's his name? Uh, Little Bow Wow out of nowhere. I did not Little see this Bow coming. Wow. He attacked Trick who? Williams. Bro, he attacked him. I legit thought he was injured. He was grabbing his leg and shit. It's fucking Lil. I can't believe you called him Little Bow Wow. Bro, they look alike. No, they don't. There's no way. <laughs> <sighs> Wait, but what is his name, though? What's his name? Lil Bow Wow? Yeah. Fucking Carmelo Hayes? Oh. I hate you. I hate you. Can't believe you made me say that. Well, segueing back into Monday Night Raw, we're setting up for the Women's Elimination Chamber. We had Becky Lynch taking down Shayna Baszler to earn her qualification into the Elimination Chamber match. Adrian, who's going to end up winning this match? Ugh. Um, In my opinion, I, I think Becky Lynch is going to win this match after... Becky Lynch defeated Shayna Baszler. I think it was Michael Cole said that Becky Lynch is going to her first chamber match. And this brought me back to uh, John Cena when he won his first Money in the Bank match. The first time ever. He was in the first match for the first time and won it. I think Becky Lynch is going to take the W. And we're going to have a real Ripley Becky Lynch match at WrestleMania. But let me ask you this, Brian. I thought this was a SmackDown exclusive pay-per-view or something. I mean, what happened? I thought the draft was uh, was going to be into place and the draft was going to... Who gonna... said it was a SmackDown exclusive pay-per-view? That's what the Paul Levesque said. Oh, yeah, this is going to change the game. And then pay-per-views are going to be exclusive to each brand. And I'm like, okay, I fucks with that. And then nothing happened. Yeah, I don't know. I think we're way far on the WWE draft. And then that's the other thing is that they're saying Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns are going to unite the titles at some point at SummerSlam. So who knows exactly what's going on. I feel like Vince McMahon coming back for a little bit just threw everything into a whirl. Like Triple H was over here bringing back Hit Row, bringing back uh, Elias, bringing back a bunch of people. And then all of a sudden Vince McMahon was in charge. They had the draft again and then Triple H is in charge again now. So it's fucking all over the place. So I think they're still trying to figure out a way to do things. Uh, somebody on social media said that the Paula Vec literally got everyone back that Tony Khan didn't want, which was um, the Hit Row, Jobber Cross, some other individuals out there, Dakota Kai. Was it Dakota Kai? Oh, Kat- no, not Candice Lerner. What's that damage control girl's name? Not the Asian one, the other one. Mitchin? Damage control? Oh, Dakota Kai? Yeah, oh, it is her name. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dakota Kai. Yeah, um, and then, and then that opening segment when uh, Rollins still pleading his case to Cody Rhodes, man. I, he said, oh, I, you know, you've beat me and I want to see that I'm still better than you because you've beat me twice. And I'm like, no, no, he hasn't. He's beaten you three times, Seth Rollins. Why are you lying to yourself, bruv? And mind you, Drew McIntyre corrected his ass after. But Drew McIntyre, man, I was telling people, he is underrated as fuck. And it shows in his segments now. I'm digging it. A lot of fans are digging it. What about you? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I'm digging it. I just, it, I don't know. Too much damage has been done. To who? To CM Punk or to who? Oh, to the Rock thing. 
Wait, wait, hold on. What thought, thought you were talking about? Fucking carrying cross, bro. I went to Drew McIntyre. Oh, sorry, Drew McIntyre. Yeah, I don't know. See, he's, he's, he's a good heel. It's something different, but I just, he seems like a troll. I feel like just too much damage has been done to, to Drew McIntyre. Like, I don't know. Like, he's still in the main event scene. It's, he's not really a full heel. He's like a stone, he's like a Steve Austin heel. You know what I mean? Like, he's yeah somewhere in between. I want to wait and see a little bit more. I saw it's clear that CM Punk, whenever he comes back, is going to be feuding with Drew McIntyre. Oh, obviously, yeah. Oh, and did you see that uh, CM Punk's comeback when he returns is going to be his best comeback of all time? I guess fifth time is a charm. <laughs> fifth time in like the last year, bro. That's fucking crazy. In, like two years. <laughs> his first return back from wrestling and then Injured. his return. Then he got hurt. Then his return. He won the title. Then he lost the title and he came back like two weeks later. Then it was all in. I think it was then the first he, one. Then he left. Yep. And then he came back from all out and then he's gone again. And he's in WWE. He's had quite a few returns in the past two years. He just can't catch a break. Or does he mean, oh, this is going to be my best return because I'm going to be in action for more than three months. (laughs) And then watch him get injured again, bro. This is so bad. I just... He's had such bad luck, and uh, everybody's happy to so see him. It was his first match back, and well, second match back, because thankfully he had the match with Dominic Mysterio at the live event. It's just fucking bad luck, man. Poor CM Punk, dude. Yeah, man. And then, you know, I would never wish injury on everybody, because we, we know injuries are bad. Yeah, I mean, he just he just has had a string of bad luck, and he just maybe maybe it's time to leave it up to the youngsters. But we'll see. Um, I'm sure he's gonna come back, yeah, have a couple more matches. Yeah, put some wisdom into the youngsters, bro. Tell them not to use real glass anymore. Yeah, no more real glass, bro. Speaking of real glass, bro, this tornado tag match of Sting and Darby Allen versus uh, Ricky Starks and. Big Bill? Big Bill. Yeah, I couldn't think of his name because I forget who the tag team champions are in AEW because, you know, they're not really on TV. So uh, so this part was recorded before we actually watch AEW Dynamite. I still un- don't understand. So a Texas tornado match is like a death match, hardcore match, but a regular tornado match isn't. I feel like we've had this discussion before. Is This is this is a, a hardcore match, right? Were you around during the Attitude Era, Brian? Did you play the WWE games? Yes, but this is the mm. point because... To- I remember tornadoes being like no tags, like yeah, luchador yeah, no tags, Mexican yeah. style. I don't remember there being like weapons involved in a hardcore match like that. There, there's been some, but not a lot in WWE when I've seen them. Um, but I think in AEW, they just take it too far. <laughs> it's lazy booking, my guy, because why is things, all of his latest matches have to be like hardcore matches? Are you going to tell Sting no? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to. Speaking uh, well, of Sting, well, wait, hold on. Speaking of Sting and not using real glass, we already know that Darby Allen is a daredevil, correct? Yes. CM Punk and Sting and Darby Allen teamed together numerous times in AEW. Why didn't CM Punk tell Darby Allen to stop doing all the shit that he was doing? Why did he have to pick Jungle Jack Perry, bro? Why? He had Darby Allen right there as a tag team partner. Why didn't he <laughs> say, hey, Darby Allen, my guy, you're young, you're 20-something. You have your whole life ahead of you. He stopped doing all these stunts, all these crazy shenanigans because he probably did, bro. He probably did tell him that, and that's why Sting is teamed with Darby Allen. That's what I'm saying. Then why didn't he attack Darby Allen the way he attacked Jungle Boy? You're not taking my advice. What are you doing? Let me go. Let me choke you. Let me hit Tony Khan while I'm at it. That's a good point, bro. That's a good point. That's facts, bro. I mean, and Sting's right there with him. Why didn't CM Punk say, "Hey, Cause Sting"? Because he's, he's, he's scared of Sting, bro. Damn. Him too? Him too? <laughs> wow. But that's a good point though, right? I thought about that the other day. I was like, why didn't CM Punk say this to Darby Allen? Why is he only picking on Jungle Boy? Yeah, why didn't he pick up on uh, FTR Gun uh, to let him know, hey bro, <laughs> you're a big you're a big star right now. You probably shouldn't be w- waving those uh those uh guns around people. So now we're here talking about AEW Dynamite. Now we've seen it. The big announcement was that Tony Khan is having a an event called Big business from Boston with with two money signs. Adrian, how do you feel about this? Um, the only reason why I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Because the TD Garden kind of spoiled it. They said something about the bank statement, and I think everybody was hoping to hear those same words. But the fact that Tony Khan swerved everybody and said "big business," everybody was like, "Huh? What is he talking about, bruv?" But uh, I mean, so far it's doing well. Presale sold out today. Sold out four thousand, five thousand tickets. Uh, more presale tickets are gonna go available online on Ticketmaster. 
so I mean, at the hint of of uh, Mercedes Monet showing up, um, it's saying a lot. It's saying that the women's division do draw, and that AEW is putting eyes on the women's division. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that the reason it's selling out has nothing to do with Sasha Banks making her AEW debut. It just, I mean, from what people are saying, I mean, I don't know. Are you excited to see Sasha Banks, bro? I'm a big Sasha Banks fan, bro. Stop, bro. You. I used to like the uh, the war she would have with my girl Charlotte Flair back and forth. They were basically wow. uh fake news giving each other the belt back and forth uh they were i wouldn't say call them paper champions but every time they uh charlotte flair or sasha banks would defend the title against one another they would lose it one month they would lose it uh i think they were the first woman ever to uh have a hell in a cell match um which i think sasha banks won i'm not mistaken i could be wrong i'm most likely i am wrong but uh, yeah, they kind of back and forth the WWE Women's title. I don't know if it was a Raw or SmackDown, but yeah, they were uh, trading titles at one point. I think that's why my girl Charlotte Flair is almost close to 16-time world champion because of Sasha Banks. Wow. Well, the only thing I want to say is I don't think they've ever been in Boston before, right? That I know of, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a pay-per-view. I mean, the pay-per-view usually, usually sell out really well uh, for AEW, so I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. It's a, it's a regular-ass Wednesday night bro is it bro i thought what the fuck yo i'm tripping balls at yep. those pay-per-view yep five weeks from tonight which was uh last wednesday when he announced it so yeah bro i'm exposed on the regular ass dynamite episode it's it looks like it's gonna be i wouldn't say a sellout but it looks like it's gonna be a great show just at the <laughs> hint mean, how big how big is that arena bro like twenty thousand people and they've only got five thousand uh, that I don't know. That's pre-sale <laughs> seats. Pre-sale seats. Um, that I don't know, but I do know that the United Center, where CM Punk debuted, is the biggest arena in the United States. So it's smaller than the United Center okay. and Madison Square Garden. Got it. Well, let's call it about 17,000. We'll see. We'll see where this ends up later. Can I just say that Big Bill and Ricky Starks were nothing but paper champions their entire AEW tag team division run? I know I made it a joke. I would always be, I would always be like, who's the tag team champions? And now they're not even tag team champions anymore. Before, you could actually say that they at least held titles. But, uh, I mean, between them and EO Sky or EO Shirai, whatever her name is now, I mean, th- you could, those are like the top, Who? top paper champs. Exactly. Is that her real name now? Or, or did she change her name? Or, or what happened? I just don't remember what she goes by now. I've been reading that article where... Uh, it's WWE, fuck, we, bro. They it changed was, their... It was Bailey. Bailey, I think. It's EO Sky. But Bailey mispronounced her name or someone mispronounced her name. I forgot who it's it was. It's WWE, bro. They change names every other week. I, bro, you, it's okay, bro. It doesn't make sense over there. I mean, Cody Story did a side quest for like a week. No, nah, no, nah, don't, don't, don't change the champions. subject. Go back to... We're still talking about AEW. I just want to see if you had that same energy over there, but I guess you I did do. it. I do. I do. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. But first, I want to talk about the paper champs, Adrian. They lost the title of Sting and Darby Allen. Apparently, Sting didn't even want to be the champion. But they said because of the rankings, since they haven't lost, that they should probably get a title shot before the pay-per-view, which is like, okay, but the Young Bucks, their record's shit. And now they're getting title shots, bro? Make it make sense. Wait, the Young Bucks are getting a title shot? Bro, come on now, Adrian. Seriously? I- I'm asking you a question. It's Sting's retirement match. You think he's going to win? They're going to vacate the titles? I I, I mean, if I've seen a, a graphic showing that the Young Bucks are next in line, then I would agree with you. But yes, so, most okay, likely. Okay, so I'm gonna, I remember this. We're going to remember this. Yeah, gonna... yeah, yeah. Most likely it's going to be the, the, the Young Bucks and uh, Sting and Darby Allen. But they do have a match at Rampage. So maybe that'll be the beginning of their winning streak. Of their winning streak. Stop, bro. <laughs> oh my god. This is so backwards. This they're, is backwards booking. They're, they're AVPs, bro. No way they're gonna lose. I mean, wait, hold on, hold on. Backwards booking. First we complain that the rankings don't make sense. Then we're complaining that they make sense and then they're like They don't ever make sense. Okay, so, so did Sting they, deserve a title shot based off the rankings? Yes or yes? That part makes sense. Okay, thank but you. But let me tell you the part that doesn't make sense. Is that we already know that they're going to fight each other at Revolution. These guys are tag champs. Yep. It's Sting's retirement match. Oh, quick. Let's just shove them on Rampage Collision so they can beat some fucking jobbers. That way they have like a bit more impressive record when they actually fight them. Okay. Then then they're going to get their W's up so they can get, be up to Why don't they just, at, th- at this point, why don't they just do, oh, let's do a world title eliminator. That way you have to beat Sting and Darby Allen twice once to earn the title. Like, it's still backwards everywhere you look at it. 
Yeah, I mean, hey, they made the rankings. They're like, oh, shit, they don't make sense. But there's one thing that does make sense, which is Sting's record. Let's give him a title shot since at least let's make something, right? I don't like it. And then we had a, what's her name, Red Velvet jobbing out to Tony Storm in the in the World Title Eliminator 2. And then we had the Alpha, Konosuke Takeshita finally beat, getting a singles match on TV again. This show, the matches were good, but everything else about it was questionable. Huh? This show was good, but everything about it was questionable. I said the matches were good, but everything other than the matches themselves, like the matches qualities, were questionable. Which was? I just explained it to you. I mean, what, what outside the matches? Because the matches were banger. I just want to see what, what other things was did you not like about it. I'm asking you a question, bro. Okay, well, first of all, let's talk about the CMLL guys, right? That was a good match. I will banger give them credit for that match. match. Banger. It was a good match. Banger. Some would say this would be a seven-star David Meltzer match. But uh, no, it was a good match. I just wish they would kind of let us know who these people were, at least for a little bit, other than what we're getting. Facts. Give us some backstory. Facts. At least at least when Hijo del Vikingo came out, he had like a, a, a little video package. Uh, yeah, exactly. A video package explaining who he is, what he does. But we didn't get that with the CML guys. And not to badmouth them, but I, at least to me, AAA is a bigger name than CMLL. Obviously. Obviously. When I heard Mascara Dorada, I, th- I thought that was Grand Metalik. And then I see this kid coming out who's who? really good, but I'm like, wow. Anyways. And I was like, who the fuck is this? This ain't the same guy. So, I, you know, is that my fault for not knowing who these huchadors are? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm not going to say that. No. I will leave Bye, that in, bro. but I just I, I just think that's funny because I, that's from one of the memes that that just have been going rampant. That this is Huchador uh, seven eight nine that that hit the ring in this match. <laughs> There's gonna be two new ones uh, going on Rampage. Yeah. I think Mystical exactly. fights might side down on Rampage, and then two new ones on Collision. And that's the thing, Mystical is like the bigger named one, but let's put them on the show that nobody watches, which is Rampage. Yeah. And it's also taped. Yeah. It's also taped. That part's negative. I don't like that. Maybe it's because that's the old Sin Cara and he's probably going to botch a lot. Who knows? So they got to edit it. I have no idea. Maybe. But Adrian, enough about what I thought about this episode of AEW Dynamite. What did you think about this episode of AEW Dynamite? Oh, this episode was killer, bro. This episode had me on my toes. When I go to a wrestling show, I'm there to watch a good show, watch some good matches. I'm there to be entertained from beginning to end, bell to bell, like I like to say. Uh, I'm glad we didn't. We don't have no 20, 30 minute promos that lead nowhere. Like you said, the matches were banger. It was a great show. If you put the matches in, I mean, the grudge match between um Sword Strickland, which we are gonna go see this Sunday, February 11th, the day of Super Bowl at Barrio Toys. But, you know, the match was great. You know, it ended in a draw. They were begging for five more minutes. Uh, uh, Mr. T.I. Magnum, T.A. Magnum over there, Hangman Adam Page was like, no, no, the rules said that you had to beat me. I will agree with you. That did not make sense when they're like, when I guess Tony Khan told Shivani that it was going to be a triple threat all of a sudden. Technically, they could have done more uh these dealer choice matches. I would have been great for me because they still would have some matches but now we're a month away from revolution now the builder comes in Samoa Joe's pissed off I don't know if he's going to take it out on somebody, which mo- he most likely will. But yeah, um, another thing a lot of people were complaining about the Chris Jericho Konosuke match was that, you know, Konosuke beat Kenny Omega clean. He beat him cleanly. And it took Don Callis as a. Uh, Wait, he interfered in the match in order for Konosuke to win? I mean, in my opinion, I'm like, come on, Jericho, you, come on, bro, you're not Superman. Konosuke's at the, he's at the prime of his career. In my opinion, I think Konosuke should have won the match cleanly. Yes, he won it with the walls of Jericho or the Boston Crab, whatever you like to call it, but come on, you know, Don Callis hit Jericho with a screwdriver and Chris Jericho kicked out. I thought that was going to be over. At the end of the day, he should have won cleanly in my opinion. I mean, you're building Konosuke as a megastar. Don't you think Konosuke should have won cleanly? Uh, yes and no. I mean, he is a heel. I'm not going to complain about heels winning in heel ways. Could he have won cleanly? Yes. But at the end of the day, he is a heel. Or he's part of a heel faction. They are going to cheat. I'm okay with it. But they should still gave him the clean win, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I understand. Heels are supposed to cheat. But enough about Dynamite. Let's talk about this WrestleMania kickoff press conference. The A-show. The pre-pre-pre-show. The A-show. The thing that everybody is so excited to talk about. You know what's funny? I watch, I try to watch it live. 
and it was boring. I was like, okay, when's when's the rock coming in? Biggie, CM Punk, and two other people are talking. I'm like, oh fuck, they're still talking. Let me change the channel. I changed it. Came back five minutes later. They're still talking. Fuck, take it off. Come back later, and I'm like, well, why is there a press conference? I mean, Rhea Ripley doesn't even have an opponent yet. Bianca Belair was there for some reason. I don't know. I didn't watch it. I mean, what was Bianca Belair doing in, in there, Brian? Uh, because the winner of the Royal Rumble. Well, I guess Bailey already decided who she was going to challenge, right? Yeah, and Bailey wasn't even there. Ah, that's weird. You know what? I didn't really think about it. I just the only thing that I kept thinking about was uh, what what Becky Lynch told Ray Ripley because the, mm. overall it was kind of boring. But there were some clippable things said here. She said that uh, mommy is going to learn how to be a bottom. Hmm. Yeah. So I mean, is is Bianca Belair going to be in the elimination chamber with Becky Lynch? Well, I guess we'll see because uh, whoever wins that is going to end up getting the title shot against Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania, most likely. Yup. 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 But let's get down to the main event, the press conference. I don't. First of all. Why was Rollins even there? He was just a waste of space. No, no fucking way. Cody Rhodes was going to pick Seth Rollins. I don't even think Seth Rollins himself thought Cody Rhodes was going to pick Seth Rollins. Like, you're, you're, a, you're a big Seth Rollins mark, Brian. How does it feel to see your favorite wrestler be the butt of all the jokes right now? I don't know why he was there, bro. Insert the, uh, what's his name? Beetlejuice meme where he's just like, nothing, just hanging around. That's exactly what he was doing, bro. He was just fucking there, <laughs> looking goofy, just in the background. In his wife's shoes. In his wife in his wife's shoes. <laughs> it was bad look. It was also a bad look for Roman Reigns because it really just he seemed more of a background character when everything was going down with The Rock and Cody Rhodes. It's like he turned into Solo Sokoa. It was a bad look, but it was entertaining because yes, The was. Rock is always entertaining. Yes. And he laid a, 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 what is it? He won himself an Oscar, an Oscar award winning slap to Cody Rhodes. He slapped a taste out of his mouth and it got real. It got so real. I got a phone call from my brother saying, bro, what's going on at, at this press conference? Is this real? Because it felt real. It felt like actually good. It was intense. Yeah, it was it was great. Like the whole show, I was like, when the hell is the rock showing up? Because that's the good part. That's, the, that's why everybody's there. That's why everybody attended on that free show. Everybody lined up to attend a free show and i'm like we're all here for the rock where's the rock and he comes out brings out a family tree and i don't know if you notice in that family tree the rock had named himself as a high chief um but then it leads me to question then if you're the high chief then why were you gonna challenge roman for the tribal chief isn't the high chief bigger than the tribal chief i don't know do you i don't know what's going on i have no idea what that tribal chief the stuff really means at the end of the day we all know the real tribal chief is jacob fatu and he was he was on that family tree Yep, he is part of the family. But yeah, I mean, getting back to that slap, I mean, supposedly Triple H is going to talk about it and he's going to address it on today's episode of SmackDown. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens because there's it was just very entertaining. I want to know what you guys think. So hit us up in the comments. Let us know what you guys thought about this press conference. Yeah, hit us up on all our social media platforms. We are more active on Facebook. We are Triggered Wrestling. On Twitter, X, we are known as T-R-I-G-G underscore W. W-R-E-S-T-L-I-N-G. Give us your fantasy bookings. Let us know what you think about the press conference. Let us know if we're going to have a triple threat, a singles match. Is the Raw going to interfere in the WrestleMania match between Cody and Roman Reigns? Anything can happen at this point. I obviously have no idea. Uncle Dave Meltzer himself had over 600 scenarios. And he did not see a tag team match with uh, Seth Rollins, Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns and The Rock. A lot of people are saying that can happen at Elimination Chamber. Do you think so? I wouldn't be surprised if we saw that at WrestleMania night one, dude. Imagine The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes night one, night two. You get Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. And to start off WrestleMania night two, The Rock and Seth Rollins, bro. Imagine what that would look like. Bro, stop. No, nobody wants to go up against Rollins, bro. <laughs> Not even Damian Priest, which is why he doesn't want to cash in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, he's been trying, bro. But I mean, CM Punk, I mean, he, what did he say? He's like, where were, where were all these fans back 10 years ago when, <laughs> I, when The Rock took my spot, bro? 
<laughs> Shit. I mean, the CM Punk was extremely entertaining during that press conference, too. As always. But so many questions, man. Drew McIntyre, what's going on? Damien Priest, what's going on? Is our truth going to steal a Damien Priest's uh, contract and cash in on the women? What's going on, bro? Who knows? <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, Brian, but whatever WWE and Paul Levesque come up with, you know it's going to trigger some people. And we're going to be here to talk about it because we are triggered wrestling. Stay triggered. Bang, bang. <laughs>